Hi, it's me. Um, this is second video that I will try to upload on the cyber campus. But most of you guys already had, um, you know, watching the video via the university server was extremely hard. I discovered myself not able to connect to my own video so even i was failed so many times to upload uh, my own video by using the university's own server so i decided to use the youtube finally i i was never thinking of myself as a youtuber but um as many professors now in our country are having experienced um, um going through the youtube is the fattest way to upload the video and give students to access with the easier way so um you can find out this video on youtube but you know, the way to access to the video is the same um, you can just go to the cyber campus and click um, the lecture board and click the video then it will be automatically redirect you to the YouTube link on the separate window of the video All right so um, each video will be consist of less than 30 minutes because I know the concentrate level of a student with the video education is pretty much shorter than the physical meeting in the classroom um i didn't read many research papers about that but i'm pretty sure with my own example i have to watch the education video as well um because um in many times in many occasions i have to um have to watch the video from the government to be educated by some sexual harassment things or some captive things um which um every and each professor should keep the rule under the rule and the regulation and the law but watching the video um online for me is really hard you know i have my own cell phone i have i have my own um laptop and my wife and my family is surrounding me so you know watching and concentrating on the video is really hard you know i can see some website i can see some youtube and it doesn't matter during watching the education video so um i'm trying to my best um in concentrating all the core concept of each chapter in a shorter time so make it as a summary in the video so it is important for you guys to remind yourself that this video is not 100 percent of the content you should study which means that i can lead you guys to the right direction to the studying point and you can study by yourself by reading the additional materials the additional textbook to deepen your understanding if you have any part that you have a hard time to understand in any part of my lecture note or my lecture video then you should definitely go to the library and find out the textbook to study by yourself or you can just use the cyber campus website to create your own posting to ask a question then i can maybe upload the additional video to answer questions from the students to deepen your understanding okay so um please do not heavily depend on this video this video is just leading materials and a part of the materials that you have to study um plus this video you need to um find out the more information around you um the best availability during this coronavirus sanction period here okay so we'll slow down the speed of the learning um the 
starting schedule is not important at this point. Um, health is more important. It is the, our first priority, and you know, keep yourself safe from any other risk is very important. And we'll wait for the situation where everything is cleared. Then we can just boost up the speed of our learning from that point. So don't worry about you no know, the possibility of losing the one whole semester, which will not affect your life with the bigger deal. I mean, you know, having these kinds of experience is kind of fun thing, you know. It is just you no know, deal that you will never experience again. You know, same for me. I have lived more than 35 years and I have never experienced with this, this situation. So, you know, you can just use these things as kind of fun story of your life and you can just try with a different approach to study at the university level with these online video things. And this is also pretty much fun time for me to um, debut myself as a YouTuber, you know. It is not fun, you know. My friends will find out the video and make me a fun and laughing at me, maybe. I have to endure about that. But anyway, so we can just start with the basic stuff of microeconomic theory, which will be easier than the other part for you guys. If you have already taken some principles of economics or principles of microeconomics, then this part will be just review of your understanding, okay? So, um, in this chapter, we'll cover these types of topics. First, we're going to learn about the law of demand and the law of supply, which may be familiar with most of you guys. And there is one thing that I don't understand. Um, I was checking the number of students we just started to this class, and the number of students was increased. I don't understand that. Um, my aim was to decrease the students, so I never used any Korean in my first video, and I will not use any Korean in my second video as well. But the number of students was increased from 97 to 103. So there are two possibilities. First, your English level is pretty high, higher than my expectation. And the second possibility is that you do not understand what's happening to your life correctly. You know? So this course is easier than the normal intermediate micro, microeconomic theory course um, created in the Department of Economics because um, we are living in the Department of International Trade. So the main object of this course is not to deepen as possible as we can about the higher level of micro microeconomic theory, but to get the brief understanding of microeconomic law or the rule that has been widespread across all the economists. So we can just apply the knowledge to understand some international economic things in your future study. So based on this object, um, I will not make you get harder to understand many parts of this course. So I will minimize the mathematical expression. Of course, we have to use that in some point, but you no, know, I will make it easier as possible as I can. So, uh, back to the topics. Um, we study the demand and supply. And you know, the market equilibrium consists of the two parts, the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price. And the equilibrium quantity and price will be determined by the intersection of the quantity demanded and quantity supply. So, after studying the demand and supply, then we will automatically understand what the market equilibrium is and we can also find out some changes in the equilibrium if 
there is any change in the demand or the supply curves. Okay, so this is a little bit of application. And also, um, as we already know, in the market, there are a third economic agent besides consumer and the buy consumer the buyer and the supplier, the seller. The third party of the economic agent in the market is called the government. So if the government getting in the market, then we'll see what happened in the market equilibrium. <laughs> because in terms of international economics or international trade things, the government is very important role in determining the market equilibrium or the flow of international trade. So the role of the government in the market is very important to understand. And you know, so it's a little bit complicated, but it is worth to spend your time on understanding the role of the government in the market. So after studying about the government part, then we can make some application of the supply and demand model, which is the simplest version of economics by far to 2020, the year of 2020. Okay, so these are topics then we'll study in our first chapter. And yeah, this is my house. I didn't go to university as you guys, you know, it's good. Um, but I will in advance apologize for some any possible noise because I'm living with the other person. Um, I have my family, so they can make a noise. You know, so please, under, please understand that. But anyway, not going to school is good thing for me, personally. Right, so um, first we can just go over the demand. So the market is basically separated by two parts, the demand part and the supply part. The demand is the story of the consumer. So if you decide to buy something, or if you decide to consume any goods or services, then you're gonna be a part of the demand side of the market. Okay, so you no, know, you can just decide to buy these things or not buy these things based on the price of that goods or services. So the price is, is the most important indicator for the consumer's decision making in the market. For instance, the iPhone because I'm the Apple lover. So I want to make the example of the iPhone. So I'm waiting for the, the new version of the iPhone for every time. So if the new version of iPhone is came out of the market, then I will thinking about to buy or not buying the, the, the new iPhone. So I will consider about the price of the iPhone. If the price of iPhone is too expensive, like you know, a million one or a million and the fifty, the one hundred and the fifty million one, then I will give up. But if the price of the new iPhone is just, for instance, you know, fifty thousand one or something, then I will definitely rush to the store and shower at the clock. Give me the, the new iPhone, give me the new iPhone or something. Okay, so it means that I react to the price of good of the iPhone. So the price is the most important factor to determine the demand quantity. But there are also the other factors to determine the quantity demanded in the market. First is the taste. For instance, in Korean cell phone market, um, our consumer's taste is more leaning toward the Samsung Galaxy S um, relative to the world average. But in contrast, in the United States market, the iPhone is more popular than the Samsung Galaxy um, cell phone. So the taste is different between the United, the United States and 
to Korea. Also, the information the information is also very important factor. Uh, if you get the more correct and the clear information about the quality of good, then you're going to have the better chance to determine whether you buy it or not buying it. Also, the prices of the other good is very important in economics. So, for instance, if the price of iPhone is more expensive than the price of Samsung Galaxy S, then there will be less quantity demanded for the iPhone. But vice versa, which means that the situation is reversed, then there will be more quantity demanded for the iPhone. So, you no know, prices of some good that is needed to use that good. For instance, the iPad and the Apple Pencil is a complement. So the prices of those two goods are very important. If if Apple Pencil is too expensive then there will be less demand for the iPad. How about the iPad and Samsung Galaxy Tab? These are the competitors. They are competing in the same market platform, so which is called the substitute, right? So um, if the price of Samsung Galaxy Tab is too expensive, then there will be more demand, quantity demanded for the iPad. So. The complement and the substitute are pretty much important factors for determining the quantity demand. Your income is also very important. If you are a poor person, then you will never, never go to the market of the iPad. But if your income is getting increased, then you will start considering about the buying your iPad or buying the highest version of the iPhone. So your income is also important factor. And the government is also very important. Government can set up the rule of the market. The rule of the market is very really important for each economic agent decision making. So because you no know, market environment can be affected by the will and the purpose of the government intervention. We'll discuss about this part in deeper details in the later chapters. So we will define two important concepts. The quantity demanded, it is exactly the same we talked about in the previous page. The amount of good that consumers are willing to buy, which is very important line. So I will make it italic at a given price level. So um, each consumer, each single consumer cannot determine the market price level because we don't have enough power. So we will be given the price as fixed or as the constant. So given the price level, we will determine whether to buy that good or not to buy that good, which will be, de which will be um, dependent of our um, subjective willingness. So if your taste or if your income is pretty favorable for buying iPhone rather than buying Samsung Galaxy cell phone, then your willingness to buy iPhone will be increased. But sometimes some people prefer Samsung or Google based platform cell phone to their iOS based cell phone like iPhone, then they will be less willing to buy iPhone to that type of consumer. So it is important to remember that um, the demand is very, very subjective part. You know, it, it is very emotional part. And we cannot explain how much or how many goods you're going to buy that good in very logical way. It's just up to your mind, right? So. You can just say that I want that good. There is no reason, but I just want to buy that good. And economists agree with that. You know, quantity demand is totally based on the buyer's mind or buyer's emotion or buyer's willingness. And economists are trying to make it to more accurate number or measurement. That's what the economists are doing in the microeconomic world. So 
at a given price level, we can add quantity demanded of each economic agent. For instance, in the market, if there are a hundred of consumers and each consumer have their own quantity demanded at a given price level, and we can add the quantity demanded of that 100 of consumers at that given price level. And we can just make a line at every and each given price level. Then we can get a single curve, which is called the demand curve. Okay. So the law of demand is very popular law in economics. If the price of that good, for instance, the iPhone is going up, then my mind may be against buying that good because with the same quality of iPhone, the higher price level is not good for me because my mind is that, okay, so I really want to use that the new iPhone only if the price level is pretty reasonable for me. So if the price level of iPhone goes up, then I will be more likely to buy less iPhone. And my friend will think the same way. So the price of that good and the quantity demand of that good has a negative relationship. Negative relationship means that there will be a downward graph in this two-dimensional world. So in economics, it is really important to draw a graph and understand situation with that graphic. So in this graph, on this vertical line, there is a price level, right? And this horizontal axis, there is the quantity of that good. So this blue line represents the relationship between the price of this good and the quantity of this good. So for instance, we can just start from this $2. If the price of this good is $2, then the quantity demand in this market is 80, which means that if the price of this good is given as $2, then there are 80 units of this good in the market, which all the consumers have willing to buy. But if the price level goes up to $3 from $2, then with the same quality of this good, it is really important. There is nothing changes, but only the price level is changed. Then consumers starting thinking about with the same quality of this good, paying one more dollar is not reasonable or at least less reasonable. So the demand quantity will be decreased from 80 to 40. So there is negative relationship. But if the price level is going down, then it is good chance to buy this more, right? So thinking about the mask in this coronavirus world, you know, if the price of mask is going up, then you're going to think, ah, I don't want to buy the more mask. I will re reuse or recycle my own used mask once again. So this is reasonable thinking. So which means that you are willing to buy the new mask is going down with the price of mask is going up and vice versa in the reverse way. So this is called a demand curve and this relationship between the price and the quantity demanded is called the low demand. Okay, so already 24 minutes passed away. Wow. Um, I'm thinking about we're gonna finish in the 30 minutes because it is not fun video, right? So I really enjoy watching the YouTube video. It is one of my hobby. Um, I usually watch the sport highlight video or some music video or live music video things. Or sometimes I watch some gaming streaming video as well as some you know, political issue discussion video or something. So these types of videos are fun, right? So I can just waste my time with the bright way watching some fun YouTube video, like before going to sleep or after 
just waking up, then you know, watching the 10 minutes of YouTube video is pretty fun thing in my life. But watching this type of video lecture on YouTube is not fun. If I were you, then it's just not fun. So um, you know, making you guys watch the 50 or 60 minutes of this lecture video is not a good idea, in my opinion. Agree with that. The speed of learning is not important. Once again, I told you. Um, just keeping the pace on and the keeping in touch with this type of stuff. It is, I think, the sufficient um, things we can do at this point. Okay. So I will tell you one more thing. The demand curve can be moved by any change in the market. So let's go back to the $2, which is given in the market. So with the same price survey, if there is any change in the market, then the demand curve can be shifted. So this is the market for which is what the market is. So, okay, so this is a market of the avocado. Do you like avocado? I really love that one. Um, because avocado has a lot of good nutrition with the fat, you know. And the fat of fat included in the avocado is the good fat. So, if you, you are considering about the diet, then you can eat avocado instead of any, you know, meat pork things or chicken things which have some a little bit bad fat there I'm not a nutritionist but you know I was just studying a little bit about that but anyway so this blue line is the demand curve of avocado in the market so let's think about the relationship between the tomato and the avocado okay so what do we think about the relationship between the avocado and the tomato. I think they are competing more than helping each other. If you have just a thousand won and you can buy just one of tomato or avocado, then you can just choose only one thing. So I think they are competing. So they uh, substitute each other, which means that in this example, if the price of tomato has been increased from 80 cents to $1.35, which means that increasing the price of tomato will decrease the demand for tomato. And the tomato and the avocado are competing each other. So demand for avocado will be increased because once you used to buying tomato, but due to the increase of tomato, you will stop buying tomato and you will turn to buying the avocado. Okay, makes sense. So at the given price level, in the market of avocado never changed. The only market for tomato has been changed, but it will affect for the market of the avocado by increasing the demand for avocado at the same price level. Okay, so the same avocado market, only the competitors of the avocado, which is tomato, price of that one was increased. So the demand for avocado at the same price level will be increased from 80 unit to 91 unit of avocado. So, and also the same thing will be happen in any given price level, right? So. The demand curve of avocado will be shifted to the right side. Okay, so this is called the increase of demand curve. You now moving to right side or moving to upward, which means that the shift of the curve entirely move of this curve shifted to the right side or shifted to the upside is called the increase of the demand curve. 
and shifting to the left side or shifting to the downside is called the decrease of demand curve. Okay, so it is easy for you guys because you guys are smart and your English level is definitely higher than me. I believe so. So it is never, never hard part for you. So, um, I hate to use that, but it is necessary part in our study. So I'm going to make a mathematical equation for the demand curve, which is called a demand function. So in our continuation avocado example, we can make some symbol. Symbol is really important in economics, so you have to be familiar with this using symbol things. The Q is any number, so it is not a constant number, so it is variable. The Q is the symbol for the quantity of avocado demanded. Okay, so it could be 80 units, it could be 91 units, or it could be 100 million units, any kinds of quantity for um, avocado demand is called Q. And the small p is symbol for the price of avocado in terms of dollar per pound. And the P with the T subscription is the price of tomato. So the P and the PT are the different symbols. Don't be confused with that. And the Y is the average monthly income of you or the other consumers in terms of dollars. Okay? So the quantity demanded for avocado or Q will be affected by three factors in our example. The price of avocado, the price of tomato, which is substitute for the avocado, and your monthly income. So we have three independent variables of the function of D. So, so, so this D means just name of function like F or like Y in your high school study. If you don't understand, go to the Hong Song Day and ask him about the function. So this function of D consists of the three independent variable, P, PT, and Y. And we have one dependent variable, which is quantity demanded of avocado, symbolized by the Q, okay? So um, let's see some example. So this is demand function for avocado, just example. So the quantity demanded of avocado or Q will be determined by four factors. 104, which is constant number, never change it. Negative 40 times the price of avocado, which means that as the price of avocado increased, the quantity demanded for avocado will be decreased because of this negative um, coefficient term. So this second term represents for the low demand, the, the decreasing or downward demand curve. And plus 20 times price of tomato, which means that the price of tomato or tomato and the avocado are substitute each other. If the price of tomato is increased, then the quantity demanded of avocado is increased, which, which means that some demand of consumers are moved from the tomato market to the avocado market because the tomato and the avocado are competing each other. The last term is the income term. So the plus coefficient of income means that as your income goes up, then your quantity demanded for avocado is also going up. So we can guess that the avocado is a normal good. We'll discuss about it later. So making this example simpler by putting in the specific number in the price of tomato and the, your income, then all three terms except this negative 40 times P will be um, reduced to just one number, 160. 
So your quantity demanded or your demand function for avocado will be affected by some constant negative some price of avocado. So this is our demand curve and which is kind of logical demand curve because we know the law of demand represent the relationship between the quantity of avocado and the price of, of avocado has the negative relationship. So the equation number three is pretty much logical demand curve in a normal market for avocado. And also, um, this independent variable of price of avocado is just one dimensional, which means that there is no square part here. So this curve will be graphically a linear. Linear means the straight line of demand curve, which is the simplest version of the demand curve in mathematical approach. So this is our demand curve representation once again. So um, we can just go further about the relationship between the quantity demanded for avocado and the price of avocado. Um, some of you guys will not be familiar with this triangle sign. This is now triangle. This is the Greek letter. Do you like the Greece? in the Europe, one of the poorest country in the Europe. People are lazy and government is so corrupted. That were the two main reasons why um, Greece became the one of the poorest country in the Europe. Anyway, um, this triangle is called a delta. Delta means in mathematics a change of so we can interpret this mathematical expression as a change of quantity demanded of avocado will be equals to negative 40 times a quantity, sorry, a change of price of avocado. So if the price of avocado changes by one, one dollar, then the quantity demanded for avocado will be decreased by negative 40 times 1, which means a negative 40. So um, with this interpretation, we can guess that there is any change, any unit change of price of avocado, then there will be negative 40 decrease of quantity demanded for avocado. Like this, if there is $1 increase in the price of avocado from $2 to $3, then there is 40 units of decrease in the quantity demanded for avocado. So you can just understand with this graph. Also, you can understand with this mathematical approach. They are equivalent on each other. So just you can just choose for the better way to understand for you guys. Okay. So I think two more slides. Sorry guys, we are approaching to the 40 minutes of video, which is totally unexpected. Um, you can add two demand curves and adding up the two demand curves is simple. At a given price level, you can just add the quantity demanded of one demand curve and quantity demand curve or the other demand curves. Okay, so you can just add the quantity and quantity at a given price level. That's the rule. Let's see the example. So we have the two demand curve. This more steeper demand curve and then a little bit kind of less steeper demand curve. And we can add those two demand curve to one demand curve. So we can start with this given price level, $7.40. And at this given price level, the first demand curve represents 0.3 billion of bushels of corn. And with the same price level, there is another quantity demanded with the, the other demand curve. Then you can just add this number and that number to calculate the aggregate demand curves. The aggregate demand curve will be definitely outer line 
because you can add two positive numbers. So the aggregate demand curve will be shifted to the right side or sorry, the aggregate demand curve will be located in the outer line or on the right side of the two demand curves, right? So you can just add any quantity, any two quantities from the two different demand curves at a given price level, okay? Then you can calculate the new aggregate demand curve. Can you do that by yourself? I'm pretty sure because you guys are smart, smart than me. Right, so the next page is about the supply curve, but I think we have to stop here because we already passed 40 minutes. I think that's enough for our first week. Because first week, nobody wants to study harder. So we can just stop here and we'll see um, in the next week with the continuation of the video. See you guys around.